creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Take long, deep breaths. Slow down your pulse. Don't move yet, and when you do, be light as a feather. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Be afraid. You smell wrong. This is the Insulindian Thasmid. It is. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open extremely carefully. It's the camera. No, the flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. Kim, the flash is loud. It won't like that. We need a photo. No one will believe us. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. I am not palatable. Do not eat me. I am afraid. It's afraid. Stop. Now. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He's letting his pride get in the way. You see the phasmid turn to him. Its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick, sudden. Who cares what they think, Kim? Understood. Of course. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you. Its antennae taking their measure of the air. Slowly. Hey. The creature tilts its tiny head to the side and appears to look at you. It is incredibly light, like the slightest gust of wind should blow it away. But it doesn't. There is a sadness in there. Or is it in you? From the dream. It's still with you. The pitiful hey you told her. Even now. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. It's smelling me. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. About now, he is ready to believe in anything. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue to expanding, like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, 
there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect's small head. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell, like summer burning. Tell me, what are you doing? I exist. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. It's wunderbar. Yes. Holy is the Lord of hosts. And all the earth is filled with his glory. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half lit images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon? By what? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it would never ache. You're the type of animal I would like to be. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Why do you ask? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. That's cool. No, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now? Yes. Thankfully someone ate it. The next time I molded, I grew an antenna again. I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Also that. I can also detect pheromones. The ones on you tell me that you will not eat me. And that I will benefit from your closeness. In short, I love you. Is this a dream? What is happening? No. You are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All oh, this around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lilies. We need to know. Perhaps it's sent to us by a god. I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. Wait, so... So you look like a reed, and you eat reeds? Yes, they don't mind. 
Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes. I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. What exactly are you? I am an unknown species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulindia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage. No, no one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. And the 4,000 year old Cerezolithic civilization buried so deep in the sediment that you do not even know it is there. They too did not see me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Are you poisonous? Yes. I do not have a star to display. So I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry. It is only destructive over long periods of time. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. Was there an ancient Cerocylitic civilization? Yes. With stone tools and silk, they too missed me. Although I had not developed the mutation needed for Partino Genesis yet and scoured the Neolithic hinterland as distinct individuals, not clones. Are you the miracle? No. You are the miracle. It was you, coming from the west, from the whirling. You were coming. How? The moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form. Well, you were extreme, all engulfing madness, a volatile simian nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetric do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human-made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Where's how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day, or just forget? This is the gloaming I've been waiting for, ever since I woke up in the hotel room. So. It is already happening. One day, one of you will close your eyes and sign, and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. 
What does it look like? You're just staring at it. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? The case? The case is meaningless compared to this. <laughs> I've totally transcended the case. I think we should take the picture and then you should back away from the unstudied species. I have to say goodbye but now. I have no more talks. That was all. No. There is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you're the kindest. Thank you. I also have one final thing to say to you. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. I will. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meters thick insect to tell you that. Okay, Kim. Take the picture. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. The sweat on your arms feels cold as ice, as if you're frozen as well, in the shadow of this great statue of chitinous marble. I got it. Immortalized. For all time. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. The sensation is electrifying, resounding through your body. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young bine. It's even a bit wet. Looks like someone's got hurt in a fight. This antennae is much smaller than the other one. Be careful, detective. It's moving. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. It tastes like sugar, very faint. The anthropod towers above you, tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike. Odorless, mostly comprised of water. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. Its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. It's about to move. You can sense it. A small shudder passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. The stimulus overloaded it. It's passing like an extended moment or a gallstone. Hair. Within the smooth white inner part of its limb, you sense something very intimate. Thoughts. Lieutenant, it's thinking with its limbs. The nervous system could be spread out like that, over the extremities, like a cuttlefish. Or a ryacinta, an occidental leaf insect, with its brain stored in four leaf-like extensions. Or a mimrisy octopus, with its intelligent tentacles. 
We got it. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. They are filled with adoration and curiosity. The adoration of some wheel or dominion spinning around its parent deity and the curiosity of a common wasp tasting sugar in a fizzy drink. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. And just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that? In the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? What now? In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? Mr. Doras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. With fear and longing. Like an addict of some terrible substance. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Quite a few things about that health check you did on him make sense now. He couldn't see it, Kim. Just the reads for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. No response. Maybe this is how the Phasmid has stayed hidden all these years. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hands not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it. Yes, you forget it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the... the doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is 
I need to advance for a nurse. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasma. It does not seem to be animated now it's left. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. I think he's addicted to that thing. Like a drug? He has displayed addictive behavior, and not just to painkillers. His pupils appear to be dilated. They still are. It's not just chemical. It's as if he's infatuated with it. Some kind of oxytocin release mechanism would go with the pupils. But this is way above me, detective. Could it be there something hormonal in this relationship to the plasma? You mean pheromonal? He seemed a little off for a man his age, Randy. The scope, knowing of her bruises, his disposition toward Miss Orania, I see what you mean. It's definitely toxic, the phasmid. He told me this. Told you? Yes, good. During your long steering match, I understand. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it is in his company? He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place, and the insect maybe. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one would believe you without it. We found some things in the phasmus nest, Mr. Cross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left, wherever he is. The last embers have gone out. The war is over. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the Phasmid, even. If it did, this is incredible. I... I lost. He lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie Phasmid? This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland. To get help. He'll be safe here. If we don't take too long. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff 